Okay, this sermon is entitled, A Changed Life Means a Changed Gospel. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 134 reads, Behold, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. Now, when I talk about a changed life, I'm not referring to an optional or a volitional changed life that can take place after you're saved. If you want to walk after the Spirit or grow in grace or ameliorate your lifestyle or your personal behavior, I'm talking about this automatic, mandatory, changed life that people demand to prove you're saved. And those who teach this, they have to, in turn, change the gospel. And the reason why is because everyone knows that when you believe something, it doesn't change you physically or in the flesh. So therefore, they have to pervert the gospel in order to effectuate said change. And it's sad and tragic because this changed life does not take place when a person is saved. In fact, the Bible tells us that we should die daily. We should put on the new man. We are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we grow thereby. The Bible tells us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These things are exhortations. They don't happen automatically. In the book of Galatians, in chapter 5, the Bible tells us that there's an ongoing perennial spiritual battle. And that we're constantly vying against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit, and vice versa. So, this automatic change is nothing but stupidity. And the only verse people go to to try to prove this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Let's go ahead and turn there and it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what this is actually saying is that when a person gets saved, they're born again. The old man has received a new birth. Being born again means you're born from above. This is not talking about some type of fleshly transmogrification or some type of new lifestyle change. If that were the case, then we'd be sinlessly perfect because it says all things are become new. So... People take this one verse out of context, and then they base an entire false doctrine on it. So now, what exactly do these false prophets change the gospel into in order to push this foolishness? Well, number one, they'll change what faith is. And in reality, it's their faith that doesn't save because they're adding to faith. Or maybe they're saying that you have to keep believing. And anyone who thinks you have to keep believing to be saved is not saved. Because they're trying to get eternal life, which proves they don't already have it. And if you think about this logically, these people believe that if you stop believing, you're not going to heaven. So therefore, you lose your salvation. Anyone who believes you can lose salvation is unsaved. And another thing these people teach is repent of your sins. The reason why they teach this is because they're not seeing any type of change in people. And the only reason these people are preaching this is because they don't like certain people. And they want certain people not to be saved. So they say, well, you haven't changed. You haven't experienced this new life. So therefore, you're not really saved. And the only reason they can say this is because they've changed the gospel. They might say something like, well, you haven't repented of your sins. Or you don't have the works. Or you don't have real faith. So you're not really saved. When in truth, it's them who's not saved. Because when you add a changed life to the gospel, to either be saved or to prove you're saved, you've changed the gospel in and of itself. So watch out for these unsaved devils. The truth of the matter is, is that we're saved by grace, through faith alone in Christ alone, by trusting Christ alone, plus nothing, and that after we're saved, we have the choice as to whether we want to grow, become a mature Christian, and at that point, we can change our lifestyle, but that's not part of salvation. That's part of discipleship. That's part of the Christian walk. And that's part of 
the post-salvation experience, but it's totally volitional, and it's not by any means automatic. So the changed lifers are not saved because in order to teach this garbage, they've changed the gospel. And anyone who believes a changed gospel believes another gospel. And like the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, let them be accursed. Let them be damned with their works-based, self-trusting, false gospel. Let them go to hell where they belong. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.